Hey everyone, I am Tracy Hunter Abramson, and I am here with Esther Hatch, Sarah M. Eden, and Sean, M. Bess Sean and Bessie, and we are here with Between the Lines. Um, we're, I can't believe this has already been four episodes that we have been in this multi-formatted version, so we'd <laughs> love to hear from everyone if you guys like it, if you'd rather video or if you're doing the audio more, but today we're going to be talking about what happens when we are juggling multiple projects. Um, you know, and a lot of times we're ju juggling projects, we're talking about you get an edit in the middle of while you're writing another book, or you get proofreads while you're trying to research something. I wouldn't know about that, but I hear it happens. Um, <laughs> but some crazy people even try to write more than one book at the same time. Of course, I know nothing about that. But I'm going to ask everyone, um, I often don't know how to answer this question. When somebody comes up and says, what are you working on? right now. What, how do you answer that? I often say a lot of things. <laughs> Usually <laughs> I will pick either. the thing that I'm like drafting at the moment or that I'm anticipating because I think what they tend to be asking is what's new that you're working on. So if I were to answer that now, I would say the next installment in my Dread Penny Society series, because that's what I'm drafting, even though I'm also doing edits on a different book and anticipating edits on a different one. But that would be my answer. Yeah, I agree with that. And I, for me, my answer right now would be the next Falcon Point Suspense with Tracy. So mm -hmm. I know what her answer is going to be now, too. <laughs> <laughs> well, for me, if I'm being completely honest, I'm working on this podcast. <laughs> Which I, think, I mean, like, uh, I, but as far as book goes, like Sarah was saying, the, the biggest thing that I'm working on right now is the second book in my um, Regency of Rank, uh, Regency of Romance of Rank <laughs> series, <laughs> which um, it's, it's the second draft stage now. So, yeah. So, and I am working on the second Falcon Point Suspense with Sean. But I have been cheating forward and starting to play with Jim and Catherine Whitmore for their story. So I just every once in a while, you just have to, you know, look at what's coming next. Um, but I'm just wondering, OK, and I'm looking at um, just the different things that we are dealing with and juggling. How do you guys keep yourself organized? Like, seriously, how do you keep yourself organized with if you're doing all these things? Well, organization isn't necessarily my strong suit. <laughs> so I don't, I don't, I feel like I've always, my way of organizing is whatever is the most pressing, whatever is the most demanding, that's probably what I'm going to work on at the moment. So like if an editor says, here, you need this back in two weeks, well, I'm going to pause whatever I'm working on and do the two week deadline think <laughs> so mm -hmm. but for the most part I like to just focus on one thing at a time because that is hard for me to like I am not one who's like on Thursdays I'll write in this book on Fridays I'll write in that book like I I have to put aside something to finish something else and then go back so right. yeah I'm like Esther I I sometimes have to stop writing one book to edit another one or to proofread another one but I can't actively draft more than one book at a time. And one of the main reasons for that, other than mental health, <laughs> is, <laughs> is that because I write in different genres or different eras, it makes it really hard because there was a time a couple of months ago when I was drafting, which means, you know, initially writing a book set in the Georgian era. I was editing a book set in the medieval era, era and I was plotting with Tracy a book that is a contemporary. And my brain was just, because I'm just here to tell you, they don't talk the same way in those <laughs> Or they shouldn't. <laughs> yes. So, yes. So if, you know, one of my books sneaks through that's set in medieval and they're pulling out a cell phone, you'll know I really had a problem that day. <laughs> I'm usually pretty good at juggling projects and staying organized, but I 
very recently failed in a spectacular way. <laughs> and because we're all friends here, I'll just confess to you right now. I have... Um, my whole year usually is planned out in terms of about when I expect to be working on different projects. And obviously you have to be a little bit flexible because things happen. Um, and when I planned out this year, my 2022 writing schedule, I forgot about a project I was supposed to turn in this year. Totally forgot about it. I don't even know what it was that brought it into my memory, but I went, oh, Oh wait! <laughs> so oh, I no. to go look up this. Um, the manuscript is due um, f about six weeks from when we're talking right now. I remembered the existence of this project three weeks ago. <laughs> oh my so gosh! I made a really big mess for myself. Fortunately, it's a novella, so those write a little bit faster. But everything had to go on pause while I sat down and just tried to get as much of this down and done as I could. So now everything's a little bit behind, but so when Tracy asks, how do you organize it? Sometimes not very well. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Going back a little bit. I, I, like I said, I'm working actively on two projects right now. Am I alone in this insanity? Have you guys ever done that before where you have worked on more than one project at a time? And if so, how did it work out? You mean like, were we actively drafting or just had- Yeah, actively drafting. Multiple? Like oh. if you're actually drafting more than one. Have you guys I'm ever done that? I'm kind of doing that on accident right now. <laughs> <because> <laughs> and how's it working out? <laughs> um, not fantastic. I've discovered my brain doesn't do that very well. <laughs> it's hard to have two books in the same stage at the same time. I don't know if that's the same for the rest of you. Yeah, about, I would like, agree. Yeah. Yeah, I, I was going to say, like, I can't, I've had thoughts that I would do that, not necessarily drafting, drafting, but I have an old project, the very first book I ever wrote, and I always want to go back and work on it. And and to me, it makes sense to say, like, Fridays, I will do one chapter because it's a rewrite. It's just, I didn't know how to write when I wrote it, let's be honest. <laughs> so, so I still love the book, but I just, my writing is really bad in it because it was, it was my learning book. So, um, but I haven't been able to make myself do it. I open it and I feel frozen. And then mm -hmm. I just go back to doing the thing that, first of all, I know this, these other books I'm going to do, I know where they have a place. This book first, it's a fantasy. It has no place as my book. Um, so I never, I've never been able to do it. I've, I've tried to talk myself into it, but I haven't, mm -hmm. I haven't been able to do it. Again, I will admit like, I would, I, my writing is probably better when I'm only working on one. Um, but I mean, it is, it is a challenge, you know, to try to switch back and forth between, I mean, I'm only doing contemporary. I don't know how Sean does it between different, like, <laughs> I, I just don't know I how don't she either. does it. <laughs> I, <don't. laughs> but, I mean, one of the things I really struggle with is that switching between projects like how do you do it if I'm writing one thing and I have to set it aside because an edit comes through and you know normally we have like a week or two to do the edit um and then you might have proofreads on something else and then it's like okay I don't even remember what I was writing where I was going now granted I realize I don't use an outline and so I am clueless truly I set a book down I don't know what was going to happen so it's probably a completely different book than if I hadn't been interrupted you know, originally. Um, but what works for you guys? Like, how does, how does it work for you to go switch from that one stage of like, even going from editing mode into drafting mode and drafting into proofreading? And, you know, Sarah, I know you do research, you do a lot of advanced work for your outlines and stuff. How do you juggle it all? Well, I, this year, I actually did I wouldn't say I worked on them necessarily at the same time, but the book that I am releasing in January, I thought I would release in Jan. So I'm releasing in Feb. Ugh, I don't know my month. <laughs> December. I'm releasing at the end of December. <laughs> I thought I would release the beginning of January this year. And why I'm not is because I ended up with two novella projects that interrupted. And so I was pausing, like, so not necessarily juggling because I just had to stop. But every time... I would stop, I would write, work on the novella as fast as I could, get the first draft done. I'd go back to this book. I'd have to read from the beginning because I am not as much of a plotter and things like that. So I don't have everything figured out in my mind. So in order to continue where I was at, I have to know where I, what I've read. 
And the only way to do that is for me to read the book. <laughs> so, so I've reread the beginning of this book so many times because I would read it, I would work on it for like 5,000 words, and then I would get edits back on the novella that I just turned in. So then I would stop for two weeks. And sadly, even just a two, well, and really it was two weeks to do the editing and then a week or two of something else came up. I get back to the book, have to read it again. So for me, it's a lot of rereading because otherwise I miss the little nuggets and threads that I planned on mm -hmm. weaving throughout right. the story. That It's not necessarily plot. It's like inside jokes between my characters right. that get lost otherwise. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah, I have to go back and read a manuscript if I set it aside too. And, and like I said before, a lot of it is because I just have to get my head back in the flow of that type of language. Um, I've noticed that when I switch genres, um, I haven't even told Tracy this, even though it's a joint project. When I write, when I write a page, sometimes I go through and read it and I have to switch out words because I'm using words that are too old for the contemporary characters. So I'm like, what? They wouldn't say that. And they wouldn't say that. So I do have to, I do, it's the language for me that I have to go back and re-immerse myself in because there's a cadence to it. it it's, it's almost like music, you know, you have to right. kind of get your, you have to get the flow back for each, for each different type of era and genre. I think that's one of the hardest things for me when I'm switching between projects. Um, I don't write contemporary like Sean does, but I have books that are set in the American West, which is a very different voice and cadence and um, vocabulary and language than my 18th century aristocracy, which is very different from my mid 19th century London street, you know, working mm -hmm. class people. Um, I think that's the hardest for me is, like you said, not having those other eras leak in and sound wrong. Um, what helps me in getting back into the story and knowing where I am, I am shocker, a meticulous outliner. And not just when I'm planning the book overall, at the end of every writing session, I outline the next scene I'm going to write. So there's an outline for every scene I've written and the next one to come. So when I come back to a project, I can just glance over the last few outlines for scenes and then read the outline I wrote for the scene I need to write next. And it gets me back into the story really quickly. So that has helped a lot, but the voice still is really tricky. That is brilliant, I, Sarah. Brilliant. I know, I know. I'm just sitting here thinking, I've been doing it wrong all these years. <laughs> Well, and I can tell you, I've done writing sprints with Sarah before, and she can put out twice as many words that I can because she has outlined everything. I'm trying to figure out what's happening. Well, and <laughs> like, you put out twice as many as me, so I don't even want to be in the same room as both of you when you're doing this. Everyone should start doing some complicated math because I'm pretty sure that Sean puts out twice as much as me. So uh, <laughs> we, now, now we know. Back to yeah. algebra, if A equals yeah. two times B. <laughs> well, and think that we all have our different processes because like with, with Sean and I writing on this joint project, I like I put in a scene yesterday and I was like, oh, well, just so you know, I haven't made it pretty yet. It's just the story. Like there's not dialogue tags. There's no like emotional beats. There's all of that stuff there. And when she puts something, I'm like, oh, it looks done, you know, like, <laughs> and then the press. No, it's exactly. because I had to go back and pull all of those medieval words out. <laughs> Why are there Vikings in my modern day mystery? <laughs> and now we know. So, yeah, I can't, I just can't. And by, and by the way, Sean did tell me that she was not to not ever let her write a Viking book. And you guys have heard her say that she's going to yes. do it. It is not my fault. Uh, we tried. <laughs> like, well, I haven't committed yet. It's still a, a vague possibility. <laughs> is that committed or been committed? <laughs> oh, there you go. Exactly. I'm not sure. So now that we have shared all of our attempts at juggling with you, um, I'd love to know what project do you want each of us to work on next? For Esther, it has to be something with a kissing scene. That is just done because we want so, to use it for our educational purposes yes. <laughs> in the future. Um, and no, I'm not going to go back to set writing anything you set before, say, like 1960. <laughs> that it's no matter what anyone says it's just it's hard work and these ladies do a great job of it but it is so not in my wheelhouse <laughs> but we would love to hear from you so please you know leave us a message share your ideas with us um on our podcast at uh, facebook and instagram pages 
Um, and we hope you'll join us again in two weeks on Between the Lines. Thank you.